Here we are under the rear suspension of our E90 chassis. We're preparing to remove the shock absorber so that we can put the new one in. Now we have a connection point on the lower control arm here coming down through. There's a nut on the end of the shock here and up top will release the upper shock mount from inside the trunk. On the bottom here, this is what we're dealing with. There's a rubber bushing that is in the control arm and it will stay there. The shock seats on it here and then down on the bottom is our nut. We're going to hold this hex with a wrench and pull the nut off from the bottom. You'll notice there's also a small hex here to hold the shaft or hold the shock body to keep it from turning. We're going to use a wrench up here, 16 millimeter. We're going to use an air gun to pull this off. We won't use air to put it on. We don't want to snap the stud, but for pulling it off, air is fine. You can also obviously use your ratchet. Okay, now here we are with our open end wrench. This is 16 millimeter and our socket on the bottom, which is 17 millimeter on the nut. And we'll simply run the nut up. There we are, there's the nut. Now the shock is free. At this point, we'll go up top, pull the nuts on the upper mount. Then again, we'll come back down and pull the shock absorber out. Now we're in the trunk of our E90 chassis, removing the rear shocks. We're going to be accessing the upper shock mounts behind this trim panel here. Now in order to remove the trim panel, we have some rivets to remove, the tie down uh, trim collar to remove, and before we do that, we're going to remove the floor panel to get that out of the way. Just lift and pull it out. Okay, now I'll come in through the rear seat, we have the rear seat folded down. I'm going to be working here. We're not going to remove the complete trim panel. I'm going to remove this rivet, this trim ring, and there's one more rivet up here, and then we'll peel the panel back to access the mount. Now to get the rivet, we'll use our non-marring pry tool. Again, these are available on our website. We pry the center of the rivet up, and then the complete rivet will come out like that. Set that aside. Now for the trim on this tie down, we have a Torx bolt. We'll just remove the bolt. And the uh, trim piece will come off. Otherwise, if we tried to pull the trim panel off, we'd break that trim piece. There we go. Set that aside. Now there's one more rivet up here. I'm going to access that from the other side because I can't see it from here. And actually it's way back here. I think I'll leave that one in. Just remove the front and we'll peel this panel back. Now, here's our access to the top of the shock. Notice the arrow, this points upward when it's reinstalled on this cover. And here's our upper shock mount. We have a nut that we will release, and we also have a hex on top of the shock shaft, just like we did on the bottom, to hold the shaft if it turns. Let's set up for this here. Now we're going to prepare to remove the nut from the shaft. I have a 16 millimeter box end wrench. This is a ratcheting wrench, which will make the job easier. Onto the nut and a six millimeter socket on the top of the shaft. And we'll just work the two against each other. Now you'll notice the nut has a captive washer and this bushing and we will reuse this. Now we're back under the car to remove the shock. 
Now here we are back under the vehicle with our shock absorber, which is free at the bottom, free at the top. Now the gas pressure in the shock absorber is extending the shock absorber, so it's not free. But what we can do is just pull down on the top until our top mount is free. Pull up out of the control arm, and there we go. There's the bottom, the top. We'll transfer this hardware, the bumper and the upper mount and the dust tube over to our new uh, shock absorber that we're installing. Okay, here we have our new shock absorber that we're going to install. We're going to do the same thing we did with uh, the removal. We're going to compress the shock and slide it into the bushing on the control arm and then up into the upper mount. And that shaft will extend up into the mount. We'll give it a hand here. There we go. Now we'll do the nut on the bottom and on the top and then this job will be done. All right, now we are ready to install our nut on the bottom of the shaft. We'll get that started by hand. Now, since we don't want to use an air gun on this for fear of snapping the stud, the shaft itself coming down has an Allen on the end of it, a female Allen, and we'll use a key there to hold it. And we'll use this drop box end to turn the nut. So a little bit tedious to uh, do the holding and tightening the nut, but we'll get this right through. Okay, and here we are. We're just about there. That's just about it. And pull our tools off. Now we'll go up top and uh, put the nut on our upper mount, put the trim panel back, and we'll be all set. Now our final step is to install our upper mount bushing and nut. We'll use the original on this. Get it down on top of the shock. Now as you recall, the original shock, we used a six millimeter socket to hold the shock shaft. This shock instead has the uh, female Allen, so we'll use a key on that. Again, we'll use our ratcheting wrench. And work on running this nut down. And here we are just about tight. We'll change our key so we have a little more leverage on it. There we are. Now we'll install the rubber cap. Remember the arrow goes upward. There's that. And we'll grab our trim panel, pull it back into place, tuck it behind the seat trim here. Now to finish the installation, we'll just finish these trim panel pieces, the rivet here for example. Um, don't forget that everything you've seen here is available in our online website at bavauto. Dot com. If you've liked this video, please hit your like button and send us some comments. Let us know how we're doing or if you have any questions. You can like us on Facebook and you can follow us on Twitter as well. You can also visit our blog site, which is where we have all of our tech info, including this video and a full write-up about it. That's at blog.bavauto.com. Dot com. With that, we're all set here. It's on to the next video. Thanks for watching.